Hey, Coach, I know you're probably implementing a lot of the same things that were run last year, but you're obviously going to want to put your little spin on on um, on the defense this year. So um, how difficult that has it been for you to kind of implement your changes considering all the pandemic and things that have gotten in the way? You know, it's actually not as bad as, as one might think because we had uh, – you know, we had a number of them, and then we took that into a period of time where we were able to do some walkthroughs with our guys. And I think that might have allowed it to click a little bit more than just delving right into full speed things. And now that we're re implementing those things through these first few days, it's really the third time now that they've heard some of these things and it's starting to make sense to some of these guys. So maybe a little bit easier, to be honest with you, than, ha than it may have been in a normal year. But it's. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, people are buying into it, they're grasping it, and uh, it, it's coming along pretty good, even though it's uh, just beginning. You know, considering uh, the, the, a bunch of other conferences have been postponing their games to the spring, and, uh, but seeing some other conferences that have been putting their sports on hold in general, does it, knowing how easy this could go south, does it give you a higher level of appreciation the sport, knowing you're able to play uh, uh, kind of a hokey answer here, but I, I really am the kind of guy that just enjoys the process. And I enjoy them in, uh, in, in getting better every day. I enjoy teaching these guys. I want to surround myself with players that, that want to do that also. And so I'm going to just continue to do what I do until they tell me that I put. Um, yeah, I do. I, I, um, you know, it's, it's certainly in the back of people's minds, but I, honestly, I've probably thought about it less than others. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what they tell me to do. And until, until they tell me I can't do it anymore. John Kurtz. Yeah. Hey Joe, what's, what's been the impact of getting Justin Hughes back and healthy there in the middle of that defense? G now. And, and he, uh, is a vocal guy, um, both in terms of helping us get lined up and in terms of challenging people, which we need. Uh, don't have a lot of those types of guys. Uh, and that's what he really brings. To, he really is our, I guess I would say, uh, uh, big out there. I mean, he's the one that, that can bring that juice. And he also brings a lot of game experience. And I know that stuff doesn't show up in practice as much, but I think that's going to matter on September, whatever, when we up. I think the fact that he's been in the fire a little. Where do you stand right now, obviously, with some, some news involved there? Couldn't be more impressed with what a name that probably didn't get thrown around a whole bunch. Uh, he's been very good throughout camp. Drew Wiley's been very good throughout camp as expected. He played a little bit a year ago. Jalen Pickle has been um, improved and somebody that will work into the rotation for sure. Uh, Robert Hintz is, is going to be bring a, a, an element of – uh, explosiveness in there uh, he's as he's working himself into shape a little challenge for that position is you know the lack of strengthening just because of the nature of the bigger bodies I mean that's the position group that probably gets taxed and you know the more they get into shape the more we're starting to see what some of these guys can truly do. I would say those four guys will, will factor prominently into the mix Ellis And, um, you know, it's like it's kind of a neat deal that he gets to play with Elijah at linebacker, a former high school teammate of his. What, what's that like to have guys who know each other so well and have been around the system so long at the, at the same spot? Outstanding. Outstanding together. They work off of each other very well. And I think that uh, Eli had played Mike last year, which is a position where we ask uh, – um, a lot of helping others, a lot of uh, do some of that and get out of his comfort zone a year ago is helping him now in a position where he doesn't have to do that. So what I mean by that is Justin can rely on him a little bit to help him something. Uh, so those two are always working off of each other. I could, I mean, Eli Sullivan's a different animal now. I mean, Eli Sullivan is an explosive football player. I, I, this is going to be a great big year for oh. that guy. I also wanted to be who, who are maybe some of the new faces who are factoring in right now. 
TJ Smith Nickel is a is a guy as a true freshman, and he was an early enrollee, which normally would give you a leg up. But the fact that you know he didn't get March, April, May uh, to do anything, I don't know how much that helped him, but it really matters to him. And he did not waste that time, and so he is he has gotten himself into the picture. Higher and hard work, um, but as a true freshman, he's a guy that could be in the mix. Uh, will Jones is a guy that will the nickel. Um, uh, you know, redshirted a year ago, and you know we expected a big year out of him, and he's he's produced. Um, you know, uh, Ross Elder is a guy that's done a phenomenal job th so far through camp, uh, and not to mention in the in Keandre Thomas, a transfer along with Justin Gardner. You know, two guys that have come in and, and transferred in, and Keandre uh, is benefits from the fact that he came from the University of Minnesota, where he's you know been in a program and been in a system, and you know had some complexity in the defense, and uh, because of that, I think he's been able to pick things up really quickly. There'll be a lot of fresh faces back there this year, you know, not to mention uh, some of the old dogs as well. Uh, Scott Fritchie. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Um. From what I understand from so far, um, maybe A.J. Parker and Lance Robinson at cornerback and uh, Jerron and Wayne Jones at safety and uh, maybe uh, uh, Walter Neal. Well, I mean, those guys are certainly going to factor into it. I'd say it's an ongoing competition right now, to be honest with you. I really would. I think it's a lot closer depth chart heading into into some of those spots are a lot closer than than people might think and and for the name, some of the names that I just mentioned you know Keandre Thomas is going to factor into that um, Will Jones uh, T.J. Smith are going to factor into that um, you know a uh, uh, Ross Elder a uh, 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 Ryan Hennington a uh, Tyrone Lewis I mean those guys all have uh, Brock Monty I mean all the guys that are in the mix and I, that's not just that's not just me talking. That's that's legitimately out there. I mean, there's there's uh, days where, um, you know, maybe, for example, at the corner, Andre Thomas outshines everybody else at that position on Tuesday, and then Wednesday it's Lance Robinson, and Thursday it's AJ Parker. That's something that we probably didn't have a year ago, and that's uh, that's a refreshing deal yeah. uh, because of that depth heading into and then this season. one of the first names that uh, Chris mentioned yesterday when you talked about. Is Khalid Duke? What has he done? And jump on. The yeah, I mean the progress that he's made in a year wide is unbelievable. Uh, else is right now. I mean, I, I they're having a hard time blocking him uh, in the run game and in the pass game, and uh, that we need. I mean, we we didn't weren't able to generate a ton of pressure with four last year. Um, you know, part because of injury and part because of personnel. It just uh, that wasn't our, our strong suit, but the fact he stepped up and been able to do that a little bit might enable us to move some guys around and in some third, third down situations, get the four pass rushers out there. And uh, he certainly emerged as one of those four, which we weren't sure of prior to this camp. Derek Young. Yeah, a lot of my questions have been asked, but all that I'm interested in is maybe – hearing about deeper than Tyrone Tallini, who is a JUCO addition for you guys. I think he's already 24 years old. Uh, so what kind of impact are you <laughs> expecting from him and perhaps when? Because I know either. You know, uh, also a guy that, that was just getting started in the wintertime, you know, before things shut down. Meetings throughout the summer, we, we were concerned that he was able to retain uh, it was so new to him, the you know, system, the terminology, everything, and it really had had him puzzled, to be honest with you. And um, stepping ahead then in camp, he's been outstanding. I mean, he's put a lot of effort into that. Uh, unfortunately, I had a the other day um, with, a, with a finger, I believe it was, and, um, you know, we'll have, we'll have him back. He won't be in Alex very long, but he is – uh, I wouldn't anticipate him being potentially one of those uh, guys that I mentioned uh, that, that can be a third down. Uh, and he's just so strong. Once he starts to ease uh, in the run game, he's going to be a, an every down guy for us probably this year. Got time 
time for only two more. Ryan Black and then Adam Meyer. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Coach Clareman, how are you doing this morning? The question is, and it kind of, you've already gotten quite a few about uh, kind of on this topic is, with John Alexander not playing this season, who does that maybe benefit the most in terms of who's going to be taking a lot of those reps that maybe he would have been getting? Um, you know, I, unfortunately at that position, as, as I said before, a lot of guys that I feel comfortable with, uh, guys that I trust, um, you know, we had already kind of made the move. Um, you know, Jerron McPherson played nickel a year ago, which was not his natural position. He did it out of necessity because we, you know, he was one of our best 11. We knew we had to get him out there. And even though he didn't mess necessarily fit the profile of what we were, you know, wanting to have out of a nick, he scrapped it up enough to, to be a good player there. Uh, but we had moved him to the, to the same position uh, that Jonathan was at. And so, um, you know, there was already a competition there. And so it probably, um, you know, he, he will take a share of those reps as will Ross Elder. Um, you know, we also took Ryan Hennington from the offensive side of the ball and moved him to safety. Um, and he's a guy that's just taken the bull by the horns and has learned and has grown immensely. Again, haven't seen him in the fire, but from what he's done through the first few days here, he, he's been a guy that will factor into also. Um, but, you know, everybody is, is benefit from those reps and obviously don't want to lose anybody, but, um, you know, I feel with the depth at that position. And then – I guess we, we had heard during the spring that A.J. Parker had you know, at least gotten closer to 100%. How has he already looked through the first few days of camp? I have not noticed any ill effects from his ankle. I mean, he's been getting in and out of breaks. He's been playing very good man uh, coverage leader. You know, A.J.'s, uh, AJ's kind of a, a guy that keeps to himself a little bit. Um, and to see him work with T. Denson, to see him work with Justin Gardner, to see him take some of those guys that are new and trying to teach them and bring them along in the package has been very encouraging. Last one here, Adam Meyer. Coach, defense is so important. And Elijah Sullivan and Justin Hughes, two senior leaders, they have said that they have been won the Big 12 championship this year to go out. And in the Big 12, you have high-powered offenses like Oklahoma. You have Oklahoma State. You have Chubba defense as a whole going up against these high-powered Big 12 offenses. Just a play at a time. And uh, it truly is all about the process. You know, I don't worry about, you know, who we're playing or how many points. What really matters is our execution. Do we get aligned? Do we get our eyes right? Do we play fast? And if we do that, you know, are we going to win every 50-50 battle that's out there? No, nope, we're not going to. You know, there's going to be a time when a corner can play technique perfectly and he's going to get a ball caught on him. There's going to be a time when we're going to have the play fit up and we're going to miss a tackle. Uh, and that stuff happens. But what we can't do and what we uh, eliminate is any miss somebody a free play. And against these high-powered offenses, make them earn everything that they get. And you're right. These teams are good enough to be able to earn it. Sometimes you're going to be good enough to be able to earn it, um, you know, and, and, and I mean, we're not going to be able to stop them if we're giving them free plays. Um, you know, can they beat us if we make them earn everything? I